And right now, it's time for that rootin' tootin' meanest man alive occasionally on a Tuesday morning. We love to bring him in. He's a great guy. He's got well over 40 years of experience uh, on uh, things like Wall Street, the economy, politics. And he brings those ideas focused with us here on a Tuesday morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the wild and woolly Jim Lynch. Good morning, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. What a great uh great beginning i appreciate it i really do that well, wakes me up that's good <laughs> well that, anyways. Mu- that music was really fantastic wow well, well, you, should well, listen, well. Listen, you should listen to us more often because uh <laughs> not, not 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 just before your show because uh no, marshall's I, been playing uh marshall's been playing some pretty good songs uh, but, well, okay. Uh, so now, uh, and if you listen to us for too long, people who listen to us for too long have no hair because they pull it out. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> only kidding, Jill. I'm only kidding. It's a joke, Jill. Relax. Calm down. No, but, uh, but the, 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 the one thing that the Jill was not like self deprecating humor with. That, that wasn't self deprecating. Here's the issue the one thing that we don't do is bang on unremittingly about a topic for so long that you have to pull your hair out. That is the one thing that makes us different from everything else. Okay, well, it's time for a little hair pulling. Right, yeah. about that. Right. Well, <laughs> everybody, the wall. Everybody, the wall. everybody knows that at 8.35 on a Tuesday, they can either sign up or tune out. So <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Welcome. <laughs> If they don't like it, they don't listen. That's what I always say. Hey, the show, the show used to be exactly you know, turn it, it off. It used to be Jim in radio. Jim, I used to work in radio stations that did the same thing all the time. Okay, and right. I, and I, you could never say to them, "Well, if you don't like it, don't listen," because it was the same thing, so they'd never listen. But the great right. thing about this station is, if something comes on that you don't like, it's in the, 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 right after it. There's going to be something. It's, it's it's a whole different platform. So right, and that's what makes, but, but that's, that, what that, that's the only reason that, that that particular element of humor yes. didn't uh, uh, strike, you strike, you. Strike, strike my funny. Bro. It struck Jim and I though. So <laughs> well, yeah, but it's all about the two of you, right? Two thirds of majority. <laughs> that's right. Okay. All, all right. right. Let's get right. Let's get right to the national emergency, yes, yeah. um, uh, which happens to be Donald Trump. Uh, very important. You can pick up on it very readily. Uh, Julia Ainsley on NBC News reports um, from uh, the border control statistics that uh, as of a May 18 report, which Congress got, we didn't hear much about, only six terrorists were stopped at the southern border. I said six. Not six out, but six. That's versus the 4,000 that uh, uh, Huckabee has been... Uh, Touting on Fox News, even though uh, she was taken to task uh, by the um, Chris uh, Wallace, yeah, Chris Wallace, and uh, also the lady who looks like she always wants to cry, Kristen of uh, the <laughs> Homeland Security. She's also lied, and uh, just underscoring the lies going on in this administration. But uh, these are real serious things. Um, uh, tonight, the president supposedly is going to speak. Um, I hope MSNBC does what they've done previously, which is have uh, people in the um, control room uh, fact-checking uh, and putting on time delay the speech, because it will certainly be full of a lot of lies. Most importantly, though, uh, Donald Trump's um, insanity or whatever it is, um, He's putting families at risk, shutting, shutting the government. And uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, ironically, the uh, 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 night host, has hired one of the people who are out of work. He's going to hire uh, a person, a show, uh, to give them some money. Uh, it's not, uh, as, as usual with the Trump administration, they don't really think uh, beyond their uh, tongue. Um, People are suffering. People can't pay their bills. Uh, obviously, they are very anxious. And uh, this is going to backfire on the Republicans because these workers are not concentrated in D.C. They're throughout the country. And therefore, they have lots of friends and so forth, relatives, who, who are going to watch what's going on in their lives, which is not, not too pleasant. Jim, it's, it's not only going to backfire on Republicans. Here's the problem. 
Uh, and and I just found out this morning, this is a very interesting part. It's going to backfire on Americans. Um, our meteorologist, Pat Pagano, pointed out this morning that the American models, which help predict the weather forecast, that everybody, any meteorologist across this country, the information all comes from uh, seven computers, basically, uh, three of them from the United States and then four, one from Canada, the Euro, and a few other ones. Well, all the United States computers are going to be inaccurate. Why? Because in this government shutdown, uh, the planes that let up, that fly into these storms uh, are cut back. The helium balloons that are sent up into the sky uh, are not going up to read the and get correct information. So the uh, the forecasts for the coming weekend. Uh, are are highly uh, improbable. Well, they're uh, not improbable. They just don't have uh, American they don't, information. They don't have the right, correct information in them from our from what we normally put in. Uh, the, if you if you uh, wanted to pay your taxes early and get a refund, it's not going to happen. If you like us, we have reports we have to file every quarter. We can't file them. We have to hold on and sit on them until the until there, this this. This partial government shutdown, there is no such thing really as a partial. It's like a semi-boneless hand. It, it, you know, when you, when you involve seven to 800,000 employees, it's going to backfire on a lot of people. But more to the point, not just when you say backfire on a lot of people, not everybody gets up in the morning and looks at, wow, what's the political situation? Let me, let me get into the ins and outs of that. So it's also creating a... Uh, a lack of uh, tolerance. It's just it's it's making a mess because people don't want to view everything in their lives in terms of politics. I'm not talking about New Yorkers and Washingtonians. I'm talking about just regular people who've got to go to work. Well, you're absolutely right, and this is why um, people are finally going to wake up. Uh, to the chicanery and the lies of the Trump administration. Uh, and, boy, they better wake up quickly because this man is quite dangerous uh, in what he says, what he does, what he threatens. Uh, he's very demoralizing. Um, it's interesting. Um, a friend of a friend uh, put something out, I guess, on Facebook, and she basically said... Uh, I cannot sleep at night for the last six months. Anybody else sharing uh, this problem? This is a regular person, not ill or anything else. She got a ton of responses. This nation, as we can see from the television and the, and, and the newspapers, we are full of anxiety. It's been generated uh, by a lot of things, but one thing in particular is the bombacity of the speech uh, coming from the President of the United States. And what is so, so sad and pathetic in a country that we've deemed as a republic, a democracy, is the fact that we don't have many people in responsible positions coming out and saying, stop already. We are a country that is one that looks forward, that is optimistic. We're not a country of negativity. Uh, and on, on, unfortunately, at the moment, we've lapsed into that uh, with this, um, I'm right, you're wrong, uh, fed by the lies coming out of supposed responsible people. Here's, well, here's what the problem is, uh, Jim, and, 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 and you're going to hear me, and it's going to sound like uh, I'm supporting the president, and I'm not. Uh, the problem that goes on is I cannot blame the people he has appointed to these important positions uh, that he thinks will be yes people because they are not experienced. They have really no idea of the depth of which the problems they're creating. You know it's a sad day in history when I can sit here on the radio and say congratulations to Mr. Bolton for, for, for turning this thing around uh, with, the Turkey, with Turkey and Syria. Now for me to sit here and say that, 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 that Bolton uh, did, a, did a correct thing uh, is 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 scary, but as much as I disagree with uh, most of that person's uh, political history and political life, um, he stepped forward at an important time, and and put a monkey wrench in something that was going to be disastrous. Uh, that's how tough it is, Jim. There's not many people. 
that have been appointed uh, that realized what would happen. Uh, you, you, you mentioned the director of Homeland Security. Totally, totally overmatched and out of her league. And that's why every time you see her, it looks like she's ready to cry. She has no idea what to do because she has no idea what the president's going to do. And that, I think, is the crux of the problem, that even the people he appoints and even the close people that he appoints now, except for his family members, have no idea how much rope they have before they hang themselves. Right. Right. Absolutely correct. And the people he's uh, hiring now, um, uh, they don't have the knowledge, and many of them don't have the principle um, the values uh, of what it means to be uh, serving the American public, uh, the integrity uh, that is necessary in doing that uh, is not part of these people's makeup. It, I mean, that woman, that woman should have resigned the first time she heard that she was on the ropes. Just get out. Now, Mathis, uh, the general, uh, he took it and took it and took it, and then he said, well, I can't stand up here as a soldier and say, I'm going to continue to be here to try and avoid this guy's uh, getting us into a war because he's crossed the line. He's going to come out, and he's saying Syria. And so Mass has resigned. Now, it's amazing. Uh, he resigned, and it was quickly put to bed by um, the media. I haven't seen, I guess I've seen one or two responsible pieces uh, basically outlining what what you said uh, in that spirit, that we we had a guy who would tell the president what's right, but after a while he just got beaten down so badly, his own personal reputation and principles, he wasn't going to sacrifice them, and he left. And uh, uh, we are in a sad state. Please get on the phone, write your congressman, vent whatever problems you have. Uh, brain-wise, and, and put them into action, uh, which is why this uh, young group that just got put into the House, many of them young people, um, uh, they, they have their own flair. They, there's some kind of encouragement. There's some kind of energy. We want to do something. We, wanna, we want to do something right. And, and hopefully, uh, as this year transpires, we're going to realize that the Senate is going to go Democrat. I don't care whether the impeachment, indictment, it's not that. It's to get us back on track. It's to get us going again. We're falling behind the world. The allies are laughing at us. Putin has made a damn fool of us day in and day out. And I don't understand. Uh, I, I get the famous guy on the network, the movie. Uh, I'm not going to take it anymore. When are American people going to get up and say, they can't take the lies anymore. Well, it's it's not really the American people, uh, and uh, and it's 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 the House and it's the Senate, and uh, and you you have people that you've you've elected. Uh, the House will now go about their own way, but the problem that they're going to run into is, of course, uh, is is the Senate. So um, we're pretty much gridlocked, uh, and it's it's power play politics for the next two or three months, and that's the sad thing about it because while the power play politics goes on uh, between the left and the right, the Democrats, the Republicans, the ups, the downs, the ins and outs. Those regular people that we were talking about get pretty annoyed, and then you get uh, well, one of these wonderful those, well, those regular and, people, and unpaid. Those regular people get ignored. And, right, and, and then and, they get uh, irked. And then the problems uh, surmount as a country – uh, in in a million, it's it's, and then, like, it's like when the garbage doesn't get picked up. When the garbage picked up, you don't realize how much garbage stinks. Well, guess what? When garbage doesn't you have get garbage picked up, garbage strikes sooner or later. You, you you know what? All of a sudden, you see all the garbage and it stinks. Well, that's what's going to happen with the Congress and and the Senate. And once again, I'd just like to interject for better or for worse. You know, this is where you get then go those wonderful polls where Congress's approval rating is you know lower than the ocean floor. Well, it was a previous Congress. It's not the new one, but but, but, but all I'm saying, all we're saying it's is that it's going to get sw sucked into that. Poor government will show its stink sooner or later uh, when all this continues, Jim. Uh, and that's that's the real sad thing about it is is that it, it is a good thing about it and it's a bad thing. People will see how stinky uh, and and unreliable the people we have elected are in controlling a, a dangerous situation like this. 
Well, I think before it gets uh, uh, stinky, before it uh, creates uh, what is needed, I, I think uh, we have in the power, the people have in their power, uh, the ability to make Congress stand on its head. Uh, a strike by the flight controllers uh, out for a week, that'll do it jiffy quick, because that'll upset the economy, upset people all over the country, and basically these people will say, okay, we've got to open up at least uh, 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 three-quarters of the government uh, that has been shut. And let's just get back to debating this stupid wall in Congress and in the Senate. I mean, when, when history is written about this period of time, uh, it's like uh, Nero when he was playing his fiddle as Rome burned. Uh, what Trump is doing to this country is outrageous. And uh, a couple of good old-fashioned strikes. You can start with a garbage strike in D.C., but I'd like to see the flight controllers go out. And that will put this country on notice that you keep screwing around, then you're going to be totally miserable. We already are probably looking at a recession, and uh, we're being pushed further and further into that possibility by these stupid tariffs, uh, by the disheartening language, by the lack of optimism. Uh, and economic statistics in the last quarter, in manufacturing particularly, they've come off. New orders have come off. Why? People are losing confidence. They're losing confidence and they're losing orders. This thing with China is an abomination. China is a major nation. We're trying to treat them uh, like they were a third world country. Uh, they'll soon be number one economically. If we don't learn how to deal with them, our problem is going to get so much worse. And we need to out Trump and the Republicans who are in bed with Putin. We need to get rid of these people. They are traitors. Well, it's uh, we'll see tonight. I, I, I'm, I can't watch it. There's no way I can watch it. But it's going to be interesting uh, if if the president goes out and and uh, and declares a state of emergency to build this wall. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. You know, I I've been. He'll go to court. I've been, I've been, I've been screaming for years uh, during the height of the energy crisis uh, when gas prices we were paying four to six dollars a gallon, depending on where you lived in this country. I was screaming for our president to to come out and say uh, we're going to declare a state of emergency until things settle down with OPEC. Uh, you oil companies are making fifty billion dollars a year. You're going to have to settle with. Uh, Twenty-five billion dollars a year, until things settle down with OPEC, and uh, we'll, we're going to keep gas prices at two dollars and fifty cents. That would have put, you know, it's interesting. You talk about tax cuts, and you talk about everything else. The things that put money into people's pockets are the things that they spend money on every day: energy, energy, energy. You heat your home, you cool your home, you drive your car, you drive your truck. You're a business that does. If you can control energy prices, you can basically settle in the economy for a while. And that's what's that's what's so – everybody looks at the stock market like that's an indicator of the economy. It's not, and especially get, when it goes up 600 points, down 1,000, up 400 points. And your local CD is uh, gives you more safe money and interest than uh, playing around with that stuff. Just take a look at energy prices as a whole. There's a, dig, there's a huge indicator. But also look at how – low and lowering gas prices are and how high our, you know, hate to say it, oil production as a nation is now. It's like these little things, at least not you, Jim, but just generally when these things are being discussed, you got to factor in all the pieces, not just the select, not not just selected ones. Well, I just can't. I, I, I won't be able to take it, so I'm not going to watch it tonight. But it's going to be, I'm, I'm going to be very interesting when I wake up tomorrow morning to see exactly what happens uh, well, you tonight. You watch it afterwards. You watch it on tape. <laughs> I, I really I, I couldn't I can't it's you know I, I just I, I'm not going to stay up to watch it because I know I'll upset myself and I won't get to sleep for the rest of the night and I have to get up at, at three o'clock in the morning I, I totally <laughs> empathize with your situation but but bringing uh, that back to your uh, friend who posted on Facebook that he or she hasn't been able to sleep for six months because uh, I know uh, several other people who 
uh, have announced to me that they haven't been able to sleep. And, uh, you know, th th there are other, th th they too could stop, you, you know, it, it's very hard, but sometimes you have to step away from that which is uh, causing you such uh, 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 lack of health. I totally agree with you. I certainly, in conversations, have uh, indicated so to my friends and so forth. What I've been doing, I've been watching more of the BBC. Uh, I've been using the radio more. I turn Trump off when he comes on uh, uh, and when some of these other people come on. However, I've started to get into Fox News a little bit. I just want to see as uh, uh, Rupert Murdoch and his kids decide we can't make profit much anymore on this thing. I don't know if you noticed that Fox News viewership about a week ago was for the first time in 18 years, slightly below MSNBC's uh, uh, in terms of people watching, uh, it's a trend, I think, that might begin to uh, uh, increase. And I think it's very important because the American people have got to come. All people have got to come to grips with truth. Truth is power. Well, truth and power and and correct report we've gotten away from correct reporting in this country. That's that you know, you know, I, I mean, I, I. There's only I can only watch literally uh, two or three people on on television uh, that, that I that I trust uh, to give me a fair look at news. One of them is Shepard Smith. Uh, uh, another one uh, that I that I really do like, uh, and I know you people are probably gonna 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 laugh me out of here. I like I like Brian Williams. I I, I I like the way he shells out his his news, uh, and I also like. Um, um, uh, what's what's his name? Uh, uh, I like I like oh Meet the Press on Sundays, not doing the the garbage during the week where they load it up, but on Sundays where uh, and sixty and also the the CBS show on Sundays, because they they touch on different issues, uh, but we don't have reporting uh, most of the time. Uh, we have a. Uh, we have a uh, panel of talkers that, yeah. that that are supporting whatever point that they're trying to make. Anyway, sorry, Jim. We only have about a minute and a half left, so we'll so, shut but, up and let you let you finish. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> what could be worse than being a field goal kicker for the <laughs> Chicago Bears? Being a field goal kicker for the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> Scott Norwood. My goodness, yeah. oh. broke your broke your heart when that kid took his helmet off. I said, God Almighty! But then I hope it, that I. I hope that Bears keep a watch on him for five or six days because. But then you have the flip side with that young kid uh, from Clemson, 19 years old, uh, a freshman quarterback, doing what he did last night. The kid's got his whole life in front of him. He's going to be a major star. So, for every sad story, that's the great thing about and, sports. You can find something that that'll offset that. And what about? Oh, man. What about that? Uh, what about the, the the freshman receiver? Come on. So so. And it, <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the Justin, video tape. Off. Justin Ross is his name, and uh, uh, what's the? All what's right, well, the... We'll, let's, let's let's find it later because we have to let Jim sign off here. Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> All right, let's let's end on that very positive note. USA, go forward. Keep it. Keep your head high. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right. uh, Jim Lynch and cover your assets uh, this morning here on Robin Hood Radio. <laughs>